Hello and welcome to World War One Great War Fighting Knives. Uh, today we'll be looking at two American uh, variations of World War One knives. Uh, both very good knives in their own way. Um, we'll be looking at the characteristics of both knives, um, the failings, etc. Um, and we'll work our way through them as we go. Now, the first one we're going to look at is the M1917 which is the wooden handled version you'll, you'll see quite common I'm just going to pull this out they're quite stiff usually to get out uh, hence the triangular blade as you can see just put it there for you for a second now there were two main variants of this knife the 1917 and the 1918 uh, this is the 1917 version uh, this particular knife was commonly known simply as the knuckle duster knife. Uh, this knife, like all knives uh, for trench warfare, was designed to kill or ca capacitate an enemy at close quarters. It was specifically designed for soldiers attacking enemy trenches. Uh, the guard has a nice stamp, US LF and C, 1917. I think you can see that on there if I just bring that up nice and close for you. Nicely stamped, you can see a little bit of pitting, but beautiful, genuine, originally original knife there. Um, now, the LF and C, uh, which is the manufacturer's mark of Landers, Frau and Clark, who started trading in 1853 as Landers and Smith Manufacturing Company and in 1862 became known as Landers, Frary and Clark. Uh, they were based in New Britain, Connecticut, manufactured a number of household items as well as items for the, for the military. They finally closed their doors in 1965. Uh, this knife had a triangular nine inch steel blade, um, also known as the stiletto blade. Now these types of blades were banned under the Geneva Convention. Now this type of blade is purely designed for stabbing and not slashing, uh, which in my eyes didn't really make it ideal for hand-to-hand -hand combat. Uh, there were also reports of the blades always bending. And as you can see, you have a look down that. You can see that. See a triangular type of blade. Now, obviously, hand-to-hand -hand combat, you couldn't slash with this blade. There'd be no slashing at all. It's it's purely for stabbing. Now, if you're a combat in the trenches and you're hand-to-hand -hand combat, you also want a knife that, um, which slashes as well as stabs. Um, now, don't get me wrong, there's a lot of very, very good points about this, this knife, but there are some flaws as well. Um, now, what it did have was a very good hard wooden grip, uh, usually made from walnut, um, which fits beautifully into the hand and has a strong guard uh, made from steel protecting your hand. Now, as you can see, with the grips on that, your fingers fit in perfect and it really, really does. It's a great, great handle on these. That's going nowhere. And like you say, it's got the guard for protection. It's uh, perfectly fitted. Even someone who's got a very big hand, well, my hands are quite big, but... You know, there's still room there for uh, a bigger hand. Um, now, these had seven protruding pyramids on them, on the guard. Uh, there are uh, a lot of copies out there where they actually do make um, manufacture these with too many prongs in them, so it's a good way of telling. Um, however, there was a, a variant made by another manufacturer out there that did have eight. Um, which had another one here um, but they are uh, sorry I hope you saw that around here but they are very very rare most had the, the well 99% of them had the, the nine pyramids around the outside there um, now these obviously are great as well close combat you could use it as, as punching um, it's a shame it hasn't got a pommel on the end here uh, now, don't get me wrong, you hit someone on the head with that, that's going to hurt. But you can imagine if it had a, a proper uh, pommel on the end, you could do some proper damage with that, especially if you, you know, you're hand to hand, you want something that's uh, going to give you that little bit of an extra edge. 
Um, now the US Army done a lot of testing uh, on these knives uh, late in 1917. Uh, there were a lot of points that this failed on this knife, unfortunately. Uh, suitability, suitability in all types of combat uh, really wasn't this nice strong point. Um, now, however, Landra, Zafari and Clark of 300 manufacturers continue manufacturing this blade um, well into and late into 1918. Uh, the main difference is being just the guard itself. Uh, there were variations uh, where <laughs> it, it had metal prongs sticking out instead of the pyramids on different variations. Um, it's a great looking knife, but I really think this knife scores uh, higher on its looks than its actual practicality of what a combat knife should be uh, good for. Um, like I say, really, really nice knife. Great to look at. Um, you know, don't get me wrong. You know, it's it's a, it's a good knife, but it just it just didn't do what you you needed to do in a combat role. Uh, the scabbard itself was uh, pretty basic, fit on nice to the belt onto your frog. Um, had leather in the middle, steel on the outside. They'd always be stamped on the the metal part of the uh, scabbard here. This one here, I don't know if you can see that, it's going to get up nice and close. Scabbard, it's clearly stamped. Again, beautiful knife, um, but it had its flaws. Now, the second knife we're going to look at, um, <laughs> now this is what I call a knife. Um, it's called the Mark I trench knife, or the US Mark I trench knife. Um, now, this American knife was designed by officers uh, of the American Expeditionary Forces uh, for use in the Great War. Uh, this knife was designed um, on test run with the previous production knives like the 1917 we just saw, but also with British and French issued knives. Uh, test included criteria such as ability to carry one-handed while continuing other tasks, uh, the quickness to draw the knife, uh, security um, of the grip etc like if you were knocked unconscious stuff like that um, the test showed that the previous 1917 really needed to be improved um, for hand-to-hand -hand combat uh, in trench warfare specifically um, so along with the officers of the uh, AEF as mentioned and the engineering division of the US ordinance the mark one was born <laughs> Uh, this knife was entirely different from the 1917, bearing an, a flat double-edged blade, uh, which is probably six and a half inches long. Really is a nice blade. Uh, and a unique metal scabbard, um, which I can show you there, which we'll go through in a second. So I'll put those down for two seconds. Um, now... <laughs> This knife come with a cast iron um, bronze, sorry, cast iron, cast bronze handle uh, with built, uh, built in guard for individual fingers. Uh, the AEF stated that the Mark I was a combination of all the best features of the trench knives evaluated. Um, the US had a had stockpiled um, a lot of these knives that were, that were unissued at the end of World War I. Even most were never issued, um, just sitting in factories. Uh, however, these did get re-released uh, in World War II, uh, most in 1942 and 1943. Uh, in particular, uh, Marines uh, serving with uh, the Marine Raider Battalions um, were in general use around that sort of time, and they were issued out to those uh, that particular um, uh, de department of the military. Now... This particular knife was manufactured by Oulion in France. Um, in order to save time in getting these newly designed knives to troops on the Western Front, uh, the first Mark I knives were procured by um, a French manufacturer, Oulion. Uh, the US government placed orders for 1.2 million Mark I knives with various manufacturers um, in the US um, and uh, one in France. 
Uh, now the blade here is stamped to Leon with the recumbent uh, lion, uh, the manufacturer's trademark. Uh, to get up nice and close, hope you can see that. Uh, the lion with the Ulion. Um, always had the stamp US 1918 on them. Now, unfortunately, this knife has had its pommel cap replaced, as you can see there. Um, it's been done at some point. I don't know when, when in time. Um, now, the original knives only had four-sided um, cap on the end there the nut only actually had actually four sides on it um, now this has been replaced that were not so deep as this now the US version did have six sides like this however they wasn't as as long and protruded as that um, which obviously when you're fighting you picture you can punch you whack someone on the head with that that's going to do a lot of damage a lot a lot of damage now like i say the originals were smaller than that protruded down probably about three quarters of that um but you whack someone on the head with that you're doing proper damage a good all-round fighting knife slashing stabbing punching um whacking over the head with the pommel uh, it, it basically had everything a really really beautiful beautiful knife now These these knives, what can I look? Now these were manufactured under wartime conditions. Uh, the French Mark I knife is generally more rougher uh, finished than the US versions and incorporates several deviations from the production specifications um, that the US come up with. Uh, several versions of the trench uh, model exist. Uh, with grooves on the top of the grip, some without, uh, some bearing letters and numbers cast into the bronze finger guard. Uh, this version has a HG1 stamped. Um, now, I don't know if this is going to come up on the camera here too well, but I think you can see that. The HG stamped in. Um, pretty crudely done, to be honest. Like you say, it was wartime in France they needed to get these produced quickly um, so mass production um, so the quality wasn't quite what it was um, in the as the US version however most US versions weren't even issued they were just sat in factories so the fact this is a Ulion made blade um, for US troops and others in France um, makes it a, a you know I don't want to say a, um, um, a better blade more highly regarded blade but there's definitely more chance this was actually used during the Great War uh, compared with the US version which um, a lot of them most of them didn't even make it over to uh, to see combat at all um, now the scabbard itself, the French versions, the Ulion version, so we say, um, scabbard, which was a it was a steel scabbard. Now the French version didn't have any markings on it at all. Now when I purchased this knife, it didn't come with a scabbard. Um, now it, I couldn't find uh, after searching for a couple of years to find an original uh, Ulion uh, scabbard. Uh, to go with my knife so I had to buy the uh, the US version um, which to me you know all right they wouldn't have been put together originally but still fits it, it gives it a scabbard if I do ever come across um, an original Ulion one I will purchase that to put with the knife uh, to keep them together um, so this one here which was the uh, the American version uh, now, I'm just going to bring this right up to the camera. I think you can see with the US version, they stamped it LF&C uh, 1918. Uh, like I say, and the French versions didn't. Um, this really, really, really is a top class knife of the times, a proper all round fighting and combat knife. Um, now, 
this knife, this just shows how good it was. It wasn't replaced in the US military, military till 1943, uh, showing the quality uh, in which this had in, uh, in many roles. However, as designs improved, the US introduced the M3 Trench uh, knife in 1943. Uh, yes, this knife ha had its flaws. Uh, it is slightly unbalanced. Uh, the handle makes it hard for traditional fighting grip positions, but for its time, a real Rolls Royce of fighting knives. Really is a beautiful knife. Um, now, going back to, like you say, you've got both versions there. Um, both very good, beautiful knives. Um, now, unfortunately, like you say, the, the test that they had to come up with with these knives this this knife here it really is uh you know now if i was grading this as a military knife for actual combat i'd put it around the sort of two to three range um even in those times it really was uh not not a great great knife for the combat roles that was required during the trench war um however for its times uh, this knife i would give it a good nine out of ten Again, it had its flaws, but a beautiful, beautiful all-round knife. Um, I'd like to say thank you uh, for watching uh, my videos. Uh, if you haven't seen any of my previous videos, um, I upload new content weekly. So please like and subscribe to uh, for all future uh, videos and blogs, etc. Now, thanks for watching, and I'll catch up with you soon. Thank you. Bye now.